Amanda here, thanks for joining me. So I'm on with a large project that's a custom order and I just thought I'd come and share just a couple of steps of my process. So I'm doing another lap book. Um, I did a gentleman themed one. Um, there's a link in the description box below to that video and I'll leave it as a suggested at the end. Um, so I'm just showing you bits and bobs, I'm not showing you the whole process because it takes too long. So here is an envelope flip, okay, I'm using, this is my own kit that I've designed, available on my ko -fi. there's a link for that below. So here we've got a large envelope, so these are the ones that measure, um, this one is six and a, is it, about, s just under six and a half by nine. We'll say six by nine, that size, and the openings there, there's no windows. So what I do first of all is I've um I haven't tea stained it, I've used distress ink on my glass mat, spread some water, dipped it in and dried it. It's faster um than tea dyeing. <laughs> and tea dyeing envelopes, you need to be careful because the glue can come undone and then you've got to start gluing it all back together. I fold the flap in and glue it shut. And you have like little tabs here. I snip those and I glue those down before I put the flap over. So that's where we we're at. And it's attached by a structure strip underneath the previous page. So here we go. So I'm just going to get some uh, brown coloured paper because I want a layered effect. So this is, I just don't want to show this other page because it is a an order. I don't want the lady to see all of it. Um, so this is the mixed paper block from the range, cheapest chips, and you get different thicknesses of each colour. Um, so I'm using the thinner, but I mean you could use anything. Um, I just like this colour for layering. Okay. So that's that, and I'm also using. I've got a small notepad that's lined with these perforations down the side. And what I do is, if you pull a a black spiral, if you pull it gently, you can undo the whole book so you're keeping those there. Okay, and again, dipped in tea stain and dried with the heat gun. Right, so we're off. So, first of all, um, I want to, I'm going to layer these together. Okay, but first of all, I just want to just take off. So, I'm having this not right to the edge but close because I'm going to put some lace on there. Let me just remember how I did the other page. Did I put the lace on first? Um, I think I might have put my lace on first, but I'll do this anyway. So I'm looking where the opening to the envelope is, and I'm bearing in mind that when I've chopped this layer down, I want some of that showing as well. So I'm going to take it back about three quarters of an inch, maybe. Okay, and I'm using my ripping ruler, so I've got nice jagged edges. It just makes the layers look nice. Okay, so I'll rip that off now. Don't throw that away. Ink it up. Oh, I've gone a bit dark there. Let me turn it over. I don't like that. It's too dark. Let me just do it a bit gently. You've just got to be careful with tea stains. Sometimes it can just look a little bit too orange. Okay, so ink it up. Just put that to one side and then glue it just short of the jaggedy edge. So this is a three in one beacon three in one glue bottle, but it's got colal in it. <laughs> just to confuse you. Right, and then lift that up, slip it inside, and just have it peeking a little bit. So you can see that, and what that does is that gives you another layered ripped look and also will just slightly reinforce the edge of that envelope for you so that when you're slipping things in and out, you know, it's not getting ripped. This is already kind of reinforced because you folded the flap in, okay? And you probably were going to layer on the other side of the envelope later so it'll strengthen it a bit more, okay? So that's the first layer. Then I'm going to add some lace because this journal is having lots of pretty lacing. 
so which way does it flip so it flips that way so I need to make sure I'm not like getting in the way of there where my lace goes okay so just bear that in mind um, I'm going to measure so keep it on the envelope don't go past the edge or else it won't flip nicely okay to about when you're measuring lace try not to have it too slack but don't pull it too much or else it, when it shrinks it won't fit so I want it to about there I'm just going to trim it off trim it off a little bit large you can always trim it at the edges if I need to and I'm going to add, carefully add a line of glue there and then that can be drying whilst I'm getting the rest done because Colal is as good as Beacon 3 and 1 but it doesn't dry quite as Beacon 3 and 1 or Fabri-Tac will dry more or less immediately your Colal takes a little bit longer which is not a bad thing but in essence in my opinion they're as good as each other apart from the drying time and Colal is cheaper Okay. Right, so we'll just leave that to dry, just leave it alone and it will dry. If it's protruding off the edge and you don't like it, okay, because you like it neat and tidy like me, um, then you can trim it when it's dried. So we've got this layer, we're going to ink that because we want the edges of each layer to stand out, that's why we're inking it, even though it's already been tea dyed. Where I've ripped, I want it to stand out so that you can see each layer. Okay. Very lightly. Right, so now I'm gonna get my brown paper and I'm back in this because it's I like I want it as a layer. Um, I like the lined look, it's just instead of using patterned paper or printing out, this is cheaper. Okay, the notebook cost me like, I probably got it from the pound shop or something. And I like these holes. So I'm going to layer this on, but I'm going to layer it not on the holes, because I want to see those through. Okay, yep, yeah, that's fine. And then I want, a, I want a brown layer showing. So that's just going to overlap the lace ever so slightly, so you can see them, see it through the holes. Just ever so slightly, not much. Okay, and then we're going to rip this about here. So, this is a bit thicker, this stuff. And the other thing we're going to uh, be achieving with this brown layer is we're going to be adding a pocket. So don't throw that away because you can use that stamp on it. Uh, I stamp numbers on them and then stick them in random places so I have a little pile of bits that have ripped okay now you can glue this on just on three sides and have a top pocket but I tried to do that and this paper is just too bit thin on its own so we're going to layer this up just need to cut it down a bit more let me just cut it down a bit more Sometimes you've just got to adjust until you get the look you want. Okay, because I only want that protruding a little bit and I don't want it protruding on the holes because I want to see through them. Okay, so about there. Yep, so let me just give the edge of that envelope a bit of an ink, which I should have done before I put that over layer on but never mind so now we're going to layer these up okay so I'm not using the lined paper as a pocket so I'm going to glue that all over and stick it completely to the brown layer okay like I say you can make it into a pocket if you want but this is just a bit thin if your paper that you're using is a bit thicker then go for it and you know the more pockets the merrier right so let me just slide that over until I've got it where I want it. Okay. I can move up a little bit. I just want these holes still showing, otherwise it's pointless having it. Right. So then at this point then, we can now glue it 
on three sides if you want or if you just want a top loading one glue it sides sides bottom if you want a side one then obviously top side bottom yeah <laughs> I personally prefer the side ones okay don't put your glue where the holes are And that is a simple way of creating extra pockets and pretty layers. Oops, my lace has moved. Let me put that back. And pretty layers. Okay. I want to make sure that the paper's over the top of the lace, not trapped underneath it. Okay. Get it where you want and then you can commit. If it's not glued down properly, you can always go back after and do it again. So, I just want a bit more rinking on the top of there. I always check my work after and I check all of the bits and make sure they're all glued down nicely like that there could probably do with a little tad more glue so what I'll do is I'll go in with my fine tip glue pen a uh, glue bottle and this really does only put a little bit on um, you know because you don't want loads of glue on your lace or it ends up making it feel hard um, so yeah, so I'll go back in and if there's any bits that are a little bit not perfect because I don't want anything catching and ripping and bringing that off. So at this point we've got a pocket there which is the original envelope. Then we've created this pocket here. Needs a bit more glue. It's not uh, it, the colour, like I said, takes a bit longer to dry which is not uh, ideal when you're doing a video. But when you're working, not videoing, it's perfect. So let me just give that a bit of a clip, just so that it doesn't lift a minute. While we get rid on with the rest, right, let me just remind myself, because I want this to mirror what I did in the first bit. Okay, so, right, yeah, I've remembered now. <laughs> so let me just get something to cover this other page up, because like I say, I don't want that to be seen. Because I want it to be, I want some surprises for the lady. So then I use some lovely patterned paper. Now this is not part of my kit. This is using up my scrapbooking paper. And I'm going to make a nice layer. So let me just rip some of the edge away. And I have had people say, why don't you rip using the long bit? And, the, you know, rather than trying to get hold of a fiddly bit and rip it. And I, I, just because I've got more control, if I do it that way and try and rip a small part I find it, I don't have control, it's the same control it's just one of my funny Amandaisms <laughs> I know that in, uh, you know, common sense would tell you it would be easier but I don't, uh, I like to make life hard for myself so then this is just, so what this is doing, I've got same tones on each other. So I've got my um, uh, tea dyed uh, envelope, I've got tea dyed paper and a bit of, you know, some brown paper and then some cream layers. So I just want something to bring out a pop of colour and I've used a dusky pink in my kit. So this one goes nice, I've used it before and when it runs out I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to, I'll probably try and uh, make something similar digitally. Because the this kind of paper, it's just coloured with dots, is awesome for just an accent of something um, when you're layering. And it's the same principle when you're doing your clusters. You always want something that's a pop of colour that's going to coordinate with your project. And it will just lift everything immediately. Okay, tip of the day. Um, right, so I want that. I'm not bothered about having these holes shown, but I want these showing. So I'm having that about there. Now, I've done this kind of layering before, and I'm repeating it because I know it works, and I know it looks nice, and I just use different things. You don't have to 
reinvent the wheel every time you make something okay if you made something before that's nice do it again just use different things right so i'm going to use a guest check these are i do have digital ones on my coffee these are ones that i was sent from america now i'm going to oh, let me get my image first so for my image i'm using I've got a set of large tags on my uh, in my kit. I've printed these on 200 GSM card, and I'm actually, as well as using them for tags, you can cut them down because the size of the image is nice. So, which one shall we go for? What image have I got below? I've got that one, so I could use either. Really, I think I'm going to go for this lady here. All right, so I'm going to first of all just cut that tag from the sheet okay and then I'm going to see whereabouts I want it so I'm going to cut it about there and about there about even so I'm going to take this as my guideline which is the bottom of the tag and then when I cut the top bit off I'm going to uh, try and go up top a similar sort of gap here and I know I'm cutting the flower off um, but it doesn't matter I can always print out another one that's the beauty of uh, digitals I can always print out another so I'm just kind of I'm not measuring it but I want a kind of the same sort of increment that I've got there at the top roughly don't need to be perfect then I'm going to put these white edges off I may well go cut some more off when I layer it on, when I lay it on, if I decide I want some more cutting off, okay, so that's that, so let's have a look, now I'm going to make this into another pocket, and like I say I've done it before, um, and you know if it's not broke don't fix it, you know if it works then keep it, now, it's a, I don't really want it protruding. I don't think I did on my first one. Have a look. No, I didn't. I don't want it protruding a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it with a pencil. I quite like this flowery bit here. So I'm going to I'm going to cut it here, and I'm going to have it the same. So I've got a bit of gap there. Okay. So you can see the guest check behind. You can see it above. You can see it below. There we go. Now you can, um, you could sew that, that would be nice. But I've already done quite a lot of sewing in this um, journal, so I'm going to give myself a break and I'm going to just glue that. Okay. Give that an ink again to make it stand out as a layer. so easy but so effective right so then I'm going to I mean you could if you wanted you could layer a doily under there in fact I might do that looks pretty just makes it a little bit different from my other one just layer a doily there Put it central. Okay, just give that chance to dry. Okay. And then this we're going to also glue on three sides only. So again, choose whether you want it top loading or side loading. We're making another pocket. So I'm going to do top side and bottom okay now I'm going to I want to be able to see those red numbers because they're pretty okay I'm going to layer that like so yeah and I'm going to glue the actual the whole of the guest check now you could glue that on three sides and then you've got one two pockets 
but we've already got one there and we've already got one there so I'm going to use the cardstock because it's stronger I'm going to use that as a pocket and glue the whole of this down okay I think that's what I did on the other one let me just check <laughs> no I didn't I've used it I've, I've actually yeah no we will we'll give it as an extra we'll have it as an extra pocket so then you're actually getting we may as well if you've got an opportunity to make a pocket and it's sturdy then use it and these guest checks these are from America these are the thick sturdy ones and once the tea dyed they're even more sturdy and I've glued it on the wrong side I'm always doing that glued it on the wrong side just make sure you pay attention and you glue it on the right side <laughs> instead of gluing the opening shut like I just have okay let me just wait here's a tip for you if you accidentally glue the wrong side rub it off and then use your emboss butter which just puts a little bit of powder on there to stop it being sticker okay so we've glued top bottom and the left side all right and then I'm going to glue it just about there and let me just move it down it wants to be central yeah okay okay and the good thing about the coal is if you rub it really carefully it rubs off like it's like yeah, I don't know how to explain it. It goes like gummy and it, you can rub it off. So then you don't have any, you know, where you sometimes get shiny when you have over glued something. Okay. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to go in with my fine tip glue and I'm just going to tack down the back of this doiler. The reason being, I don't want it to get lifted whilst the journal's being flipped through or used and then getting ripped or all like crumpled and look messy okay so there now we have let me just get something quicker so from one envelope so far just on one side bearing in mind you can do a similar thing on the other side as well you've got a pocket there because it's still wet I'll have to be careful a pocket there under the cardstock image okay You've got a pocket under the guest check, that's two. Then you've got a pocket under the topper, that's three. And then you've got your envelope, so that's four, so that's four pockets just on one side. All right, so that should all be dry now. Okay, then obviously you can stamp, you can add your washi tips. Let's have a look, see if I've got... What have I got that's nice? I like the... Um... Tim Holtz one with the butterflies but I don't know where it is is it in here I've, I think I've it's out on my desk somewhere <gasps> it's out on my desk somewhere but goodness knows where okay so I'll probably go back in with some little numbers or what I'll do is I will uh, you know at the end I'll stamp some of my strips of scraps and then I'll go back in and I'll stick them on, you know, maybe one there, for example. Um, but I'll do that at a later date. So what I'm going to do now is... Do I want some of these numbers on? I'll just have a little bit of numbers there. Just because I do want to keep a kind of vintage look. Okay. And then I've got some appliques because um, I want it... I want it nice like I say I've done something very similar before but if it ain't broke don't fix it so if you know it looks nice do it again just use different images slightly different I think I just did just guest checks this is a whole layout so I will be calling this a four pocket altered envelope except you could do the same on the back and then it would be an eight pocket altered envelope and we want that 
to just go onto the photo there look and so I might put something here I might not I might just leave it you don't have to fill every space yeah and then yeah that's nice let me just cut some of this away So I get my wedding appliques from Florence Holmes, who is on Facebook, known her for years. What you get does vary, because obviously it depends what dresses she gets. She's reasonable with her prices as well. Okay, let me just get that it's and then I'll just have that there don't want it where's the pocket end so I don't want that to protrude over the brown it can protrude over the top of there that's fine okay and then you'd leave that to dry like I say you can replicate the same on the back of the envelope okay and you know, you're not going to get four pockets if you replicate this because that's already the opening. So one, two, three, four. So on the other side, you'd have three. I'm not actually replicating that on the back, I'm doing something different, but you can do that. Now, you can do this to your envelopes before you stick them in. I do do that sometimes and have them ready in a box, but sometimes when I'm creating, I like to put everything in and then you know, see and decorate each one to suit what's behind it I want the colours to match, things like that so there you go, hope that gives you some ideas that doesn't take long at all and you've got yourself a four pocket page altered envelope thanks for watching, have a great weekend bye for now